When you were growing up, the closest you ever got to a personal medical data collection device was probably this. Or possibly that. But these days, health trackers have gotten a lot more sophisticated and a lot more wearable. These smartwatches from companies like Fitbit and Apple are teeming with tiny sensors that display their findings on your smartphone. So this looks like a list of all the things that the watch can detect. Exactly. Low heart rate, high heart rate, irregular heart. Right. And blood we, oxygen. Blood oxygen, walking steadiness, headphone notifications, noise notifications, and even hand washing, which we can detect. And of course, your pulse rate. 94. That's 94. high, isn't it? It's on the higher side. So either you haven't drank enough water or you might be really stressed. I might be on national television, for example. And that could be a reason. Dr. Sumbul Desai is a physician and vice president of health at Apple. At the company's California headquarters, she demonstrated how an Apple watch can warn you about dangerous sound levels. This is flight 37 now leaving for San Francisco. <laughs> there you go. There it is. Measure your cardio fitness. Yours is 28.6, and it is a little below average. Clearly, I've been very lazy, uh, busy, busy. And even perform an electrocardiogram. You're going to put your finger on that digital crown. That's real right now? That is real of what your heart rhythm is doing. And if you want to choose to share this with your doctor, you can hit export to PDF. <laughs> but the most life-changing talent of the latest smartwatches is brand new. They can give you early warning of medical problems. For example, if you're sleeping more or sleeping less than you used to, if your heart rate is at a different baseline heart rate than it was, those are early signs of things that may be going on. Without my having to check anything, it will actually tell, tell me if it discovers something alarming? It will. Another one is walking steadiness, which is if we notice changes in your gait, we can actually give you an early notification where you can do something about it. Then there's atrial fibrillation. It's a heart condition where your heart quivers instead of beating. As many as six million Americans have it, and it often leads to stroke. The problem is these episodes are intermittent, so your doctor's checkup might miss it. But your watch. You know, the watch is with you all the time. Our watch can detect if your heart is beating out of rhythm and will surface up a notification. Has this feature saved any lives? almost every day. Their physicians are actually telling them, I'm so glad you showed up when you did because this really um, could have ended much differently. And you don't drive your car around without a dashboard. That here we are as people, we're more important than cars, but we're running around without any sensors, most people. And we should be wearing these things, in my opinion, because they can alert you to early things. Stanford School of Medicine professor Michael Snyder is conducting several studies to see how far wearables can go in detecting disease. What's the complete list of conditions that a smartwatch might be able to one day detect? Infectious disease, anemia, even type 2 diabetes. And then in the future, I'm pretty confident there's other things, for sure heart conditions. We're working to see if we can detect cancer right now. Snyder got a taste of his own smartwatch medicine in April. On the day of a cross-country flight, he felt congested. His own app alerted him of sudden changes in his breathing and heart rates. So I did a COVID test, and it turns out I was negative. So I went ahead and got on the plane. Big mistake. <laughs> he did have COVID. I listened to my COVID test, and I should have listened to my smartwatch. And sure enough, in a Fitbit study involving 100,000 people, those metabolic changes predicted COVID three days before any symptoms appeared. Now, at the moment, Snyder's app can't tell what is causing your vital signs to go screwy. Right now, as I say, we can't tell the difference between certain kinds of stresses like workplace stress and mental stress versus a COVID, but in the future, we will. I am here to say that these data are great. People who self-track are more likely to be connected to other people and when they're connected to other people, they're more likely to be happier. University of Cambridge professor Gina Neff is the co-author of a book about self-tracking. Overall, she's a fan, but she does worry about who gets to see our medical data. Imagine devices that are being used in warehouses to determine if someone is moving fast enough. 
imagine devices that you sign up for to help train you to be a safer driver, but it's instead used to raise your insurance premiums. These are scenarios that are used in companies today. At least Apple and Fitbit say that they can't see your data. I want to be completely clear that Apple does not have access to any health information for a user. It is on device encrypted and in the user's control. You don't have some engineer that could look up David Pogue's blood oxygen level? Absolutely not. For Stanford's Michael Snyder, the promise of disease detection on your wrist is a goal well worth pursuing. 3.8 billion people on the planet have a smartphone. But if you compare that with a $50 smartwatch, you'd have a health monitoring system for 3.8 billion people. I think we're just at the tip of the iceberg on what's possible.